those of you at home, someone that I know pretty well, someone from the Pennsylvania area that I battled with and PTQs and such back in the day. So he's been around for a very long time, just like Gerard. Yeah, and I would think if the Siltai control deck is what Gerard plans for it to be, this should be a decent matchup for him. I would think so. I mean, it's a lot of the same tools, a lot of the same strategy, but Gerard is backing up with a lot more counter spells and a lot more card drawing. Seems yeah. like a good recipe. Yeah, the, if you are truly a control deck in the format, you should prey on the mid-range. Typically, yeah. You want to be playing with mana leaks and cryptic commands against those kind of decks. All right. We'll see. The co Gerard with a healthy amount, as you said, of card draw and 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 selection in his deck. What he's going to have to put up with is that Ben has a lot more discard and disruption. Ben can try to poke, punch a hole through Gerard's strategy and ride a card like Liliana or possibly Dark Confidant through. So the most important cards for Ben in this matchup, his discard spells, they're very good. His Planeswalkers are going to be solid Lily on the Veil, and then Lingering Souls, because it's hard for Gerard to answer that, that card cleanly. The other cards, Tarmogoyf, Scavenging Goose, Siege Rhino, Dark Confidant, if those end up carrying the day, that's great, but I don't think Ben expects that to happen. I think he's really leaning on his discard, his Planeswalkers, and Lingering Souls as his best cards in the matchup. All right, well, we are underway. Gerard Fabiano on the play. He is on your right, playing Sultai. Ben Green on the left, Obzon. Both players undefeated. And here we go. Gerard creeping Tarpit. Ben with Verdant Catacombs. Both players just trading lands back and forth. And it'll be Gerard, the first one to make a play, searching up Forest here for his all of his Sultai mana online. Does Gerard have one Shadow of Doubt in his deck? He does not have one He seems one like a of one doubt. Shadow of Doubt kind of guy. That's why I ask. The best part is when you ask him about it, you know, like, Gerard, where's the Shadow God? I just say something like, oh, that card's not very good. Like, no, he's probably, no, I think his answer is probably, like, I just I cut, just cut it. it, I had to, I had to make room for one, <laughs> let's call it Golgari Charm, which is in One compulsive day. research. Yeah. Right, one well, Thought Seize. <laughs> is it One Thought Seize? It is One Thought Seize. All right. I would make that up. No, there's, no, there's One Thought Seize. <laughs> All right, well, it's going to be Tarmogoyf on turn two for Gerard. Right now, just a 1-2, but it will grow as the course of the game goes on. Go over to Ben. He has a 2-drop of his own. Could be an opposing time away, but he also plays 3 Scavenging Ooze and 4 Dark Confidant. Yeah, a lot going on on 2. Nothing really happening for this deck on the first turn except for discard spells. Maybe Path to Exile. Search is just for basic forest here. Still missing white, but you... See, it is... It feels like the pressure is on Ben to get something going here. Yeah, as the game goes on longer and longer, things get better and better for Gerard. That's going to be Scavenging Ooze here. Gerard now will Thought Seize on turn three. We see what Ben's working with. It is a, a bevy of lands here. Looks like Godless Shrine, two fetch lands, Lingering Souls, and another copy of Scavenging Ooze. And Gerard will take the replacement Scavenging Ooze. And not a hand full of threats for Ben. Gerard probably can get his way through that. That thought season to a creature did turn Tarmogoyf into a 3-4, though, so that'll turn sideways for Gerard, knocking Ben down on life to 15. And Gerard playing land three, passes back, has blue-green up possible counter spells. Yeah, mana leak present in Gerard's deck. Scaving use is a little bit annoying for the Tarmogoyf, but this is uh, one of the values of playing strategies like what Gerard's doing. If his Tarmogoyf dies or is otherwise invalidated, he doesn't really care that much at the end of the day. His yeah, deck's if, about doing other stuff. If Ben's spending his turn here to just activate Scavenging Ooze, that feels like a win for Gerard. Yeah, I think most likely Ben's going to try to cast the Lingering Souls here, and I believe that's what's occurring. Yeah, Gerard will go ahead and go for the Mana Leak for it. Something that Ben's probably okay with here. I mean, anytime someone counters your Lingering Souls, that's it, get, it got some value. Well, the issue here is... Ben's not got a lot left in his hand. Right. And if something happens to the Scavenging Ooze, then his two flyers have to race a Tarmogoyf that's already 4-5 with Ben taking the shot. So uh, it, the game might just be played at a pace here that's not favorable for Ben. And that is exactly the recipe that happened. Overgrown Tomb of Land for Gerard, but it is Abrupt Decay taking care of Scavenging Ooze before it gets a chance to eat anything in the graveyard. So Tarmogoyf puts Ben down to 10. It will remain a 4-5. Gerard has dispatched both of Ben's Scavenging Oozes. And Ben will play Godless Shrine tapped and say go. So no flashback on the souls is suspicious. It means he drew something that matters. And, and abrupt decay it is. Both players playing off the top here, and that's a fight that Gerard was ready for. It's going to be Thrag Tusk with five mana here. And this card's just so generically good in any game that drags out, and that's what Gerard's deck is all about. 
just have our resources bump into each other. Eventually, we're in a spot where we have four or five mana. Your deck's probably not equipped to play that sort of game, and Drag mine definitely is. Drag Tusk, always, almost always a two for one, if not a three for one in modern. See, Ben spending one card on it, that's going to be Maelstrom Pulse. It's going to draw, gets his beast token. Already got five life off it. Activating Creeping Tar Pit and swinging for six. That'll put Ben Green down to four life. And the Creeping Tar Pit really complicates the Lingering Souls plan here. E even if that there's an answer to the beast, he's got to find an answer to the Tar Pit as well. Very challenging to do. And back here, yeah, Ben now at four. Can he stabilize here? Both players are light on resources, but Creeping Tar Pit is going to be enough. Ben, without the answer, is going to go down. Gerard Fabiano up game one. And that was a classic Gerard game there against a the mid-range deck. There was no turn that stood out as being particularly good. It's not like Gerard had some backbreaker at some point in the game. He just kind of hung around, did his thing, had some pretty yeah. good trades. Eventually, he gets to one of his expensive cards, which is worth multiple cards out of Ben's deck. And there you have it. Nothing fancy, just uh, very well suited to playing an attrition game. Yeah, he really was able to capitalize on the fact that Ben's hand was a little land heavy. Uh, he, the Ben's best action card was Scavenging Ooze, and Gerard took care of both copies. Yeah, so uh, Ben did fly out a little bit there, but I, I think Gerard had a very solid game plan regardless. Yeah, so will these players move to Cyborg? We were talking a little bit about one of the publications we have coming up here, and that's Next Level Deck Building, the book by the innovator, Patrick Chapin. Yeah, I mean, this is coming in paperback for the first time very soon. Patrick Chapin, of course, Pro Tour Hall of Famer, Pro Tour Champion, two-time runner-up the World Championship, the most prolific writer in the history of the game, someone we're very excited to have writing this book and available in paperback very, very soon. If you haven't heard him talk about magic, his theory is among the best in the game, certainly worth a read. Right, and I, I think that, you know, with him playing a lot now, with him not necessarily tied to playing control at every single tournament, being a little bit more flexible, that combined with his theoretical base means he's one of the most dangerous players on the planet now and had yeah. excellent results through 2014. Yeah, certainly has a pro tour win in the last year, something few people can claim. With Fleece Main Lion, I think. That's, that with is one Fleece, of the weirder parts. Not with Cryptic Command, not with Mana League, not with Cruel Ultimatum, Fleece Main Lion. So anyhow, if you want to learn anything there is to learn about magic, I think Patrick Chapin's the best resource on the planet, and uh, his publications for Star City Games have been extremely well received. All right, well, going to the sideboard, let's first look at Ben Green's sideboard. He's going to have to become a bigger, more resilient deck. How does he do that? Got some bad news. I don't think he's really that well suited. Two Aven Mind Sensor, two Stony Silence, a Zealous Persecution, two Timely Reinforcements, a Sword of Light and Shadow, three copies of Fulminator Mage, an Engineer Explosives, a Duress, a Slaughter Pact, and a Creeping Corrosion. Not a lot to bring in here. The Duress is fine. I think the three copies of Fulminator Mage and the Sword of Light and Shadow are okay. Yeah, but that was, I was say sword, maybe. I guess that, that can go bigger, but it certainly is prime target for Abrupt Decay. We, we are looking at a couple of good sideboard cards here for Ben and nothing great. Yeah, going over to Gerard's side, he actually isn't much better suited. He does have some things. He has a fourth, his, a second, I was going to say fourth, but no, a second copy of Thought Season, the sideboard. Uh, he has a copy of Endillion Click that he could use here. Uh, other things he has, Nature's Claim, Damnation, maybe Sower of Temptation, uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal, and Fulminator Mages of his own. I like Sower of Temptation a lot in this matchup because it's hard for Ben to leave in a lot of creature removal. And if he decides, well, I'll leave in the Abrupt Decays because those answer a variety of things in Gerard's deck. Sower's outside of range of that. And if Ben's leaving in cards like Path to Exile, that's a big victory for Gerard as well. Uh, yeah, I, like bringing in, I like bringing in the other control stuff here. I think the Vendillion Click's good. I like the Damnation. I like the additional copy of Thoughtseize. Just more, I, I think that Gerard's plan in this kind of matchup is just out good stuff, Ben. Just, we're drawing yeah, cards. Like... Most of our resources just sort of collide into each other. It's removal spells or discard spells or creatures that are bouncing off of each other. And as long as I outdraw you, or I have the best thing at the end of the day, that's going to be good enough to win most of the games. So everything that fits into that strategy, even though they're sort of non-congruous parts, so were Damnation, Click, Thoughtseize. I think they just all add up to Gerard being able to outpower Ben. Yeah, that certainly does seem like the game plan. A lot of his, it's not finesse in the deck. It, it really seems like it's its power. It's like a big hammer here. You look at the, the sorceries that he, he resolves. Things like Ashiok, Damnation, Compulsive Research. These are just heavy hitters that really grind someone down. And Ashiok, I think, could be very good in this kind of matchup because it absorbs a lot of attacks. And everything that Ben has, 
as far as creatures go, is high impact and costs less than five mana. Tarmogoyf, Scavenging Goose, he's trying to Dark Confidant. That's They're like great a great Ashiok. roster of cards to hit off of Ashiok. So uh, I think that card could be a player in this matchup. Yeah, so interestingly, I, we were talking about the one thought season Jarrah's deck. He does have four copies of Inquisition of Kozilek, which is interesting that he's going normally I guess I see the split be a little more even here, but he does seem to show some concern for his own life total in matchups. No, Gerard's very conscious, and decks like this, a lot of the decks that you build, typically struggle game one against Mono Red, and I think he's conscious of that. Most of the time, Inquisition's going to be a, just as good as Thought Season, if it helps yeah. a little bit with that matchup, well, it's definitely worth having Inquisition. And Burn is a great deck in Modern, but we are underway game two. Gerard does have one of those Inquisitions of Kozilek. He'll be on the draw. The hand we see here, Fulminator Mage, Liliana of the Veil, Dark Confidant, and Lingering Souls. If he doesn't have an answer to the Dark Confidant in turn two, you feel like he has to take it, right? Probably. But this is a very solid hand for Ben, you know? This is the type of hand that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gerard in the pure power level prism of the game. Yeah, there are a lot of very strong cards here. Liliana, Dark Confidant, Lingering Souls, among the most powerful cards in Modern. And I think uh, Liliana and, and Lingering Souls, we talked about this earlier, are perhaps Ben's two best cards in the matchup, period. So a very solid opening hand here for Ben. And Dark Confidant is taken by Gerard. Ben will go ahead and fetch on end step here. He does have lands two and three already in hand. Just trying to go ahead and get his mana working. Godless Shrine is the find. Not a lot of players had a better 2014 than Gerard. I mean, Open Series win, Grand Prix win here in Baltimore. Yeah. Second in the Players' Championship. Certainly uh, no one had a better December than Gerard. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's still... I think looking to spike another Pro Tour, uh, that's obviously on his list of things that he wants to do sometime in the near future. But uh, between the tournament success and the decks he's built, uh, he has had a really good run of the last 15 to 18 months. Land drops traded by both players on turn two. They're going to wait until turn three where the heavy hitters start to come out. And I like the draw for Gerard that turn. This is, I mentioned it before, a one of copy of Compulsive Research. That's, it's such a, it's so greedy, but just, Really, the payoff is so high. Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure that if Gerard had the option, he would play three or four copies in this matchup. It's one of his better cards, so it's a little greedy, yes, but uh, the cost is low and the ceiling is quite high. And it'll be Lingering Souls from Ben. Perhaps more powerful to get Liliana to play this turn, but uh, Ben respecting the possibility of Mana Leak or some other counter spell would rather leave yeah. with the flashback spell. And Gerard does have the Mana Leak now, deciding whether or not he actually wants to fire it off here. Yeah, I think that this gives Gerard the opportunity to go Mana Leak your play, untap, cast Compulsive Research on an empty board. Yes, Ben gets to follow up with either a flashback of Lingering Souls or his Liliana or something else, but from a tempo and card advantage angle, it's a very solid opening here from Gerard. Yeah, and most of those cards are things he can deal with. I guess Gerard will be hoping to dodge maybe a Siege Rhino. That could be difficult. I think Liliana is the big threat here. Uh, Siege Rhino might be bad too, but Gerard's decks typically have they can lots kill, of they ways. Can kill things. It's very rare that someone sticks a random creature and Gerard's deck is, you know, oh, I have no way to kill this thing. That happens very rarely. And one of each basic in play right now for Gerard. Let's see what he chooses to resolve here. Is it going to be that compulsive research you mentioned? It's going to just be Snapcaster Mage on Thoughtseize. This is awesome too. I mean, gets the Liliana the uh, out of the hand, lays him with a Fulminator Mage against three basics plus a Lingering Souls in the graveyard. Can't really draw it up strong for Gerard. Can't draw it up much better than this. And Ben had among his better cards in hand. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask for much better of a hand than the one that Ben started this game with. Yeah. Fulminator Mage and Treetop Village, the plays for Ben. We go back over to Gerard. He drew Damnation for the turn. We'll offer a trade. Not going to be accepted. Ben down to 16. Pretty bad sign for Ben if he's attacking right there. <laughs> and this is going to be Serum Visions from Gerard setting up his draws. Draws a land, grabs two Scry. And neither to be kept. So Gerard's a funny case story in, in a number of ways. <laughs> but he's All always right. built his decks like this. And now, because his results have been so good, people have, you know, started to crib his deck list. But he's been doing things like this for about 12 or 13 years. And back in the day, he was made fun of endlessly by the good, good, end quote, good players. And as time has gone on, magic philosophy in deck building has moved way closer to where Gerard is 
than to where the other camp was. So Gerard was like mid-range controlling before it was good. Right, and I'm not saying that the way that Gerard builds his decks or every card selection is correct. What I'm saying is he was way ahead of his time. And now you see a lot of people sort of copying his influence in the way that decks get built sure. and having very good results themselves. And there we go. After the CM Vision Star does go for compulsive research, research, takes the shields down for a turn here. All Ben can do is thought seeds back. He sees abrupt decay, fulminator mage, damnation, creeping tar pit, misty rainforest. Nothing really great to take here. Right. There's no hole in this hand. It's, again, Gerard is just trying to out stuff Ben. And that's a handful of good stuff. No critical piece. Nothing Gerard absolutely needs to resolve. But all the cards matter. Yeah, especially because Ben has a treetop village in play. That Fulminator Mage is a real card. Abrupt to Chaos, almost always a real card. Uh, Ben's going to go ahead and take care of the Damnation because it's probably Gerard's only elegant answer to the Lingering Souls Ben's casting. Yeah, there's two paths there. Gerard also, Ben rather, also has the option of taking the Fulminator Mage and hoping that treetop village goes unchecked against Abrupt Decay and Damnation. Going with the 1-1s, Gerard is going to go ahead and abrupt decay the Fulminator Mage. He's doing that before making his land drop so that now he can make a Creeping Tar Pit. And Link, he'll offer the trade of Snapcaster for a Spirit Token. And Ben will accept. That's one of those attacks where Gerard's pretty happy either way. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like right now Gerard is, he's becoming more of the control deck right now, as opposed to wanting to race. For a while there, it looks like Gerard may be able to just race Ben, but seems to be settling in with that play. It's going to be tough with Ben having Lingering Souls in the deck. Racing is not always going to be easy because Ben has a ton of control over damage racing. But uh, Gerard has set this up pretty nicely. A lot of light to work with still. Resources left in hand. And we go back to Ben. Just a Plains in hand right now. Draw a Swamp. That's no help. Activating Treetop Village, swinging for four. Ben's only play right now is he just has to pass back. Gerard certainly with the advantage now. Can he capitalize? Drew Cryptic Command for the turn. Great card. He still does have the Fulminator to take care of Treetop Village as well. That's going to be the play. And he'll just pass. Yeah, he's, you know, the shields are down here for this one moment. He does need to get that treetop off the table. Uh, but this does potentially open up an opportunity for Ben to draw something big. Yeah. Not a great, not terrible. Ben draws another copy of Treetop Village. Gets to put Gerard down to 10 on the swing. He does lose Treetop to the Fulminator Mage, but he has another one to replace it. So the attacks get to continue. Treetop, not a shabby draw here. Uh, one of the more challenging cards in Ben's deck for Gerard to answer because Damnation and Abrupt Decay don't touch it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. There isn't that much removal that's great at answering it. Now, at Gerard, all, really. Gerard does have things like, for example, Thrag Tusk and Tarmogoyf, which also happen to answer it in, in its own way. But in terms of clean removal, he doesn't have a ton. Yeah, I think he has to answer it proactively. Gerard there just drawing and passing back the turn. He is at nine. Ben's going to continue with the same attacks. That puts Gerard down to five. Ben's draw for the turn was Dark Confidant, and looks like he's just going to continue to jam. Gerard has an Abrupt Decay, has Cryptic Command. He can kill it cleanly, or he can go for a card draw. It'll just be the kill spell. And then End Step Cryptic will bounce Treetop and draw. Yeah, my first Pro Tour, I had a Treetop Village uh, hibernated along with something else, and having a Treetop Village bounce your hand stinks because it takes a while to get back. And Gerard's four mana here. It's going to be Knight of Souls Betrayal. That's come out of the sideboard in against Ben to take care of some lingering souls, and it does just that. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure if that was going to be the plan for this matchup, but quite good right now. Yeah. Well, ben, maybe with an answer, he casts Treetop Village, or replays Treetop Village, rather, and then casts Sword of Light and Shadow. This could get around a lot of things that Gerard is doing. He has Sword of Temptation as one of the main control cards in his hand. And that's not going to help too much. Gerard starts with the Inquisition of Kozilek, sees the Ben as just a swamp. And he's going to have to pass back. Yeah, Treetop Village is, you know, not the best card for Gerard to play against. A lot of his removal sorcery speed. Activate Treetop Village, put a sword on it. It's now going to be a 4 4. He'll swing in. Can Gerard answer? He has another cryptic to bounce the treetop. Uh. 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's just exhausting to go through these kind of turns if you're Ben. Yeah, Tarm will go after the play for Ben. A little bit of a miss. Well, maybe not. I guess it's still fine. I was going to say Ben did play his land, so he couldn't re recast Treetop Village that turn, or replay it. But he did get to cast Tarmogoyf, which is yeah. just about as good. Well, with Gerard having Sword of Temptation in hand, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, ben doesn't know this. Right. But I think Ben's best plan is to try to just ride the Treetop Village and hope that Gerard cannot find an answer for it. And we know he does have the answer. It's Sower of Temptation takes the Tarmogoyf. And not only does that take a threat, but it also gives Gerard a blocker that deals with Treetop Village, so a huge swing for him. Right, so we're just an awesome one-off here. Again, not integral to any plans, but uh, just another high-impact card that's hard to beat. And a great draw for Ben. It's going to be Scavenging Ooze. He immediately puts a sword on it, and he has two green mana up. He can shrink that Tarmogoyf back down now if he needs to. Yep. He can be very precise with it. He can make the scavenging use quite large as there's some creatures to mess around with. I don't think Ben's going to want to go too crazy stripping his own graveyard because if the sword starts connecting, he's going to want to get some of those cards back. Gerard at five. He's going to have to get some sort of answer here. Looks like he's going to activate Creeping Tar Pit and swing it for two. Now he passes back. And we'll start on the graveyards. Gerard's creatures go first. One from Scavenging Ooze, another one for Fulminator Mage. And right now we get to untap the, a 5-5 five, five Scavenging Ooze. Threatening to get a lot bigger as well. There are four green mana sources for Ben. He'll start by Maelstrom Pulsing, the Soul of Temptation. Not shabby. Not a bad draw. <laughs> Gerard will go ahead and concede to that one. So we are on to game three. Ben Green able to get that damage across, thanks to having some difficult to answer threats that Gerard just wasn't able to get by. Yeah, basically Treetop Village was the real deal breaker there. Uh, Gerard's deck, you know, you just look at the removal sweep, Maelstrom Pulse, Abrupt Decay, Damnation, Soul of Temptation, Mana Leak. Uh, this is not a great base of cards. Yeah, not at all. Now. Gerard can answer Treetop Village with many of his large creatures back on defense, but that plays into Ben's game plan a little bit because creature removal becomes live. Uh, the sword becomes live in a lot of those spots. So uh, you really saw the power of Treetop Village there on Ben's side of the table. One of his most important cards in the matchup. You did find that game just kind of thinking that Gerard really needed a Tassiger or a Thrag Tusk, didn't you? Just a big, substantial thing. Yeah. You know, the cryptic commands were good for Gerard, the counter spells were, but uh, he never found some big card to overpower what Ben had going on. He was treading water the whole time, and eventually uh, Ben's threats were either too high impact or too hard for Gerard to remove. Which is fair. So, the, I mean, it was, there was an interesting game because it felt like we executed Gerard's game plan more or less. It was just that, just the end part that didn't happen for him. Exactly. I, it, I, I think he had that game mostly in control. His deck does have a vulnerability to man lands because of the nature of his removal suite. And the man lands got him. That's all there was to it. Yeah, see, players. So while we get ready for our third and final game here, we'll take a moment to talk about the complete commander, Benny Smith's guide, updated for 2014. Yes, yeah, so this is our official guide. You can find out more about it at www.starcitygames complete commander. Uh, find out more about this. It is an online, an online guide for the format. It's been updated for Commander 2014, the set that just came out. Uh, Benny, a regular columnist on our site, writes a lot about more casual formats. And he goes all the way back with Star City oh, yeah. Games, all the way back for former Virginia State Champion and uh, someone who's been a vanguard of casual formats for as long as I can remember reading the website. So very well qualified to write this book. Again, updated for Commander 2014, available in PDF at starcitygames.com slash complete commander. Right. Looking back to our match for game, we have game three coming up. Like I said, it seemed like the game two was going mostly in Gerard's way. Basically, up up until the second treetop village, is there does Gerard need, Gerard need to substantially change anything here? There isn't a lot that he can really sideboard to give him more game against treetop village. I guess 
he could try to bring in spell skite, but that seems so anemic against Ben's deck. A card is very it's yeah. very easy for him to kill. His philosophy of only relevant of only really good cards, that doesn't seem to work with spell skite. So I don't think there's much for him to do about it. It's just one of those things, you know? If if Ben draws a bunch of treetop villages and Gerard doesn't find a creature or his creature doesn't stick, you know, you're gonna lose some games that way. It's just the cost of doing business. Yeah, I guess Gerard wants all his cards to trade or be a threat, and Spellskite doesn't really pass that test. I think he has it most likely for matchups where it's just very good. Twin, Infect, Burn. Burn. You want him, right. you want him for the Haymaker matchup. It's not here to block Scavenging Oozes and Treetop Villages. Yeah. We're underway game three. Gerard on the play starts off with Serum Visions. So generally the first two turns are just some combination of cantrips and discard spells for these players. Yep. And he keeps both on top. So, deck set up in a way that Gerard is happy with. We'll see what his keep was. It's going to be a thought seize from Ben Green. He draws four lands, Damnation, Cryptic Command, Maelstrom Pulse. Slow hand, a lot of raw power. Yeah, a lot of very generic answers here. Yeah. You know, cryptic counters anything. Maelstrom Pulse blows up almost anything. Damnation blows up all the things. And I'm curious now, Gerard left both the cards on top of his deck. I wonder if it was something proactive. That certainly is what his hand's missing. If he's something like Ashiok Nightmare Weaver, it would be very good here. And maybe more telling is what Ben decides to take here. The cards all seem relatively similar. He's going to go with the Maelstrom Pulse. Only three mana card in Gerard's hand. Maybe he's trying to sneak something under. Certainly if he has a Dark Confidant, that would be the card he would take. But we saw, you know, Gerard left on top. Now he's playing a dual land untapped. And his draw for the turn was Mana Leak. So right. something to help him get to that sweet spot of four mana. We can start casting Cryptic Command and Damnation. Yeah, Shock and Say Go certainly is suspicious. Ben stirring Wildwood and will Thought Seize again. He gets to learn about the Mana Leak. If you're Gerard, you almost just fire off the Mana Leak. It seems likely. Yeah, uh, it's the sole idea is that you always you always negate the Thought Seize. Because yeah. if you if the mana doesn't matter. Uh, I guess the other side of it is all these cards are about the same in terms of quality. And you do get two points of damage out of the deal if you let the Thought Seize resolve. Yeah, two points of damage. If you think that Mana Leak is not your worst card, you can show him your hand in the hope that he takes the wrong thing. Right, and Gerard got paid off for two free points of damage there because Ben went ahead and took Mana Leak. Yeah. Gerard, land number three. Now, this is a window where Ben gets to resolve something, perhaps a Liliana here, or maybe even a Fulminator Mage would all be pretty good. And he'll go for Tarmogoyf. Tectonic Edge was the play. I believe he had a Liliana, but didn't have double black to cast it. Yeah, he's on Tectonic Edge, Stirring Warwood, and, and the Swamp. So his mana getting to him a bit here. Jar <laughs> fetching a Watery Grave here. Yeah, had Ben had the Swamp for the Liliana, I would say this would seem very good for him. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but now we're getting in the territory here. If Gerard makes a land drop, he can cast Cryptic Command. That shuts out a lot of Ben's main phase action, and Gerard gets a lot of control over the way the game gets played. Yeah, Cryptic Command just seems like an all-star in these mid ranges against these mid-range decks. Yep. Deals with any quality card and then cantrips. We'll go back to Gerard. This is turn four. We know Ben knows about Gerard's two four drops. He's got Cryptic Command and Damnation. Both are pretty reactive. Gerard at 15. Tarmogoyf is a 3-4, so Gerard can let him hit it, let it hit him a couple times if he's hoping to get more value off its card like Damnation. He does have triple blue up as well, so both cards cast him. And he'll just go for the one for one. Damnation takes care of Tarmogoyf. Shields are down. What can Ben resolve? Not much, but he did draw Thoughtseize, so maybe he can stop Gerard from resolving something. Yeah, still no double black on that side of the table. Yeah, this is going to be his only spell of the turn, actually. And <laughs> Thoughtseize maybe saving Ben here. Didn't get to take the Cryptic Man because Gerard had drawn a Thrag Tusk. Yep. So now it's, you know, can you find something to do? Before Ben gets his second quality spell off. Right, not only, uh, yeah, but... Uh, uh, also, from Ben's side of the table, how do you get Gerard to commit the Cryptic Command without leaving yourself without enough resources? And that draw from, from Gerard there, just perfect. I mean, that, that draw is incredible. We have Jace, Architect of Thought. He's going to minus two it, so he shows three cards. Ben sp splits them into two piles, and Gerard picks one. I would assume he's... Well, I was going to say he's going to take whatever piles two, two cards are in, but 
that Fulminator Mage is pretty attractive against Ben's Mana Screw. Yeah. Well, the thing is, what, uh, what happens next turn if Ben draws a land? Because then you have Cryptic Command in your hand, and you've tapped out. You have a Fulminator Mage, but Ben's kind of broken out of the land screw. The more conservative route is just take the land and the Mana Leak. Yeah, Gerard's hand is just counter magic, though, so Ben, say, draws a land and resolves a big threat next turn. Gerard's not ready to deal with that either. Yeah. I like the Mana Leak here because Ben probably cannot both make a threat and kill Jace. So Gerard goes ahead and... Yeah, he took, took Fulminator Mage, I believe. Yes. Yeah, Ben will spend his whole turn Maelstrom pulsing away the Jace. I mean, that's a big win for Gerard. And he'll go after Ben's mana. Stirring Wildwood will be the victim. And now Ben down to just black mana. He's going to need running draws of lands. And doesn't get there, but he does have a Dark Confidant, which he drew last turn. Yeah, Confidant not bad here. Uh, Gerard, we know, is running pretty light on resources down to basically just the Cryptic Command. Yeah, Gerard needs to get board presence before Ben draws out of this land screw. Yeah. If once Ben draws a land screw, it seems unlikely Gerard will be able to win. It just depends how pronounced Ben's colored mana difficulty is. You know, if Ben finds uh, a black dual land and then all of a sudden a lot of his hands unlocked, Gerard's in trouble. But, but Gerard, did he find? And wow, he found the abrupt decay for Dark Confidant. Huge for him. Able to do that on end step, even. Yeah, this is perfect because now Gerard just puts Ben back in the same holding pattern against Cryptic Command. Yeah, and it looks like Ben finally does draw the land. He draws Windswept Heath. He's going to be able to fetch for a dual land. He can go start jamming these Lilianas. Has to decide between green and white mana. He has and both Abrupt Decay and Path to Exile in hand, so. So he is turning off one of his cards no matter what he picks. Green probably is, seems like the safer choice. White is certainly the splash in these Obson decks. Yeah. And if Gerard had a creature at this point, he probably would have cast it by now. So. And here's going to be Liliana number one. He does have two. And Gerard certainly cannot let that one resolve. It'll be a counter draw for him. Gerard needs to find another card like Thrag Tusk, some sort of way to close the game. Tassiger would be great, too. Here's Serum Visions. That will help him get there. Draws one. Can he scry into a threat? Don't know. Top and bottom. Well, at least one of the cards Gerard likes. I would think I would think it's one of his finishers. Maybe something like Cryptic Command. Yeah, I would or Snapcaster, I would take at this point too. Ben gets one more turn here. He's gonna go for Liliana again. This one does it resolve. No creeping tar pit yet for Gerard, so he does not have a way to attack it down. He does have two cards in hand. I mean, Ben's right back in this if Liliana resolves. Snapcaster Mage targeting Manly. And I'm sure that Gerard would have preferred to wait to be able to Snapcaster Cryptic Command because that's so much more powerful, but that Liliana can enter play. It's too good right in the spot. Now we have to see the card he kept on top. It was Compulsive Research. A great card here for him. Yeah. What Gerard's been doing is he's been using this extra time he got to build up card advantage to the point where now he's not even down on cards to Ben anymore. No, no, he's 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 actually ahead, I would argue. Or I would assume at this point. Yeah, Ben with two cards. Inquisition will see Path to Exile and Abrupt Decay. We'll go ahead and take the path. Just Abrupt Decay left for Ben. Creeping Tar Pit for Gerard. And he'll go ahead and make Ben discard the last card in his hand. And you weren't kidding. These things just grind down the opponent. Right. So now Ben's in a position where he has a Titanic Edge that can answer the Creeping Tar Pit. So it's Snapcaster Mage against very little, but Ben with a lot of big draws. Gerard as well. I mean, Gerard has a slight advantage here. He has a thing in play. He's ahead in life total. He's got a lot of mana, and his deck's probably more powerful at this stage than yeah. Ben's, but Ben is drawing very live here. Yeah, a top deck Siege Rhino this turn would really turn things around. Yep. Can Ben do it? We'll see. He does not have too many draws with which to try, but if he can get a 4-5, it's going to be real good. It'll be Fulminator Mage. That'll buy him a turn. Gerard activating, creeping tar pit, swing. Ben has the has a block, has a pretty clear play. He can block and destroy the tar pit. Yeah. 
go for another draw next turn. I can't imagine he wants to race in this spot, so this seems like the play. Yeah, he can, and this is an aggressive line. Ben's going to let the creatures trade because he feels like he has the tarpet answered in Tectonic Edge. I would just be wary of removing a land, land from yeah. the table right now when you're this down on resources, and Siege Rhino is one of your big draws. Gerard with Dark Slick Shores. He doesn't have too much action going on either. And it is Duress. Gerard just has a land also. And last card is Dark Confidant from Ben. Good card, but it is low life totals here. Gerard has a good draw of his own. This one's Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. And Ashiok's actually pretty sweet in this spot because if Ben has to attack the Ashiok, then he's likely to get punked out by his own Dark Confidant. Yeah, he doesn't have too many turns of Confidant that he can work with. Yeah, he'll go ahead and hit Ashiok. Ashiok's down to three. But Ben's draw here, he, he Dark Confidant into the land and drew Siege Rhino. Uh, pretty, perfect yeah, for Ben. Pretty perfect set of draws right there. And that was, it was only a matter of time till Ben hit one of those. That was certainly the card he's been hoping for for the last four turns. Yeah. Gerard plussing once again. This time he hits a bevy of creatures. Siege Rhino, Fulminator Mage, Fulminator Mage. But the damage has been done. Ben with a 4-5 on the board may have just turned the corner. Gerard with the, with the Verdant Catacombs that we know about, and now it's back over to Ben. Draw shows Verdant Catacombs, draws Abrupt Decay. Ben is firing on all cylinders Abru now. Abrupt Decay couldn't be better in this spot, too. Yeah, Abrupt Decay is the, the Ashiok, and Gerard just... <laughs> he's got to be feeling like this one got away from him. So in this spot, I would have preferred, because this Abrupt Decay is almost certainly going to resolve, because it's uncounterable, I would have preferred Ben to move to combat first. So that you can't cryptic tap team or it just gives Gerard less information on what to do with cryptic commands. Does Gerard have a cryptic? Well, it's in his deck. Okay. Uh, ben, you know, maybe he has yeah, it right now, maybe he doesn't. You are right. But since this abrupt decay is just gonna resolve, you might as well move into combat, attack, see what Gerard does, and then abrupt decay after the fact. Yeah, deny the information until the last possible moment. Yeah. It's also possible Gerard has something like Vendillion Click in his hand, and you'd be better served maybe Abrupt Decaying Vendillion Click instead of Ashiok. There's just... I, I don't like... If he clicked in to block the Dark Confidant. Right, I just don't like the timing of this. I think Ben can resolve this Abrupt Decay on Ashiok after combat. Yeah, that is true. If, if Ben had... If Gerard had clicked in Dark Confidant, that would be... Or clicked, had played in... Flash in Vendillion Click, Ben would want this Abrupt Decay to hit the Click, almost certainly. Right. That said, Gerard does not actually... Yeah, he has one click out of the board. He will fetch down to eight. And this Dark Confidant just doing all the heavy lifting here. Ben got one for one turn, and boy, did it matter. Yeah, there's some pretty miraculous draws here from Ben. It was looking like... Uh, you know, we were talking a couple turns earlier where Ben's got some draws left, yeah. but it looks like Gerard's in the commanding position, and, and Ben found those draws. And up to that point, Ben's draws, to be fair, had been pretty lackluster. He felt like he, he was kind of due for a business card, but boy, did it perform. Well, just, he's in a tough position in this matchup because he has to leave in some of his reactive cards, but it's susceptible to either Gerard's discard being live for the entire game, right. or you have creature removal in your hand and Gerard just never presents a creature. Both of those problems can come up. So even Ben's, like, okay reactive cards, are They're, pretty bad. They contribute to a systemic problem. The Abrupt Decay, though, speaking of reactive cards, that one's going to be pretty good here. That goes ahead and takes care of the Ashiok. Pre-combat, Ben's going to swing in or try to. Here's the Cryptic Command you talked about. Gerard will tap and draw. And if you're Gerard, you're looking for Thrag Tusker Tassiger. Damnation would also play. Yep, yeah, he does have a second copy of Damnation. The first one was thought seized a long time ago, but you're absolutely right. Sower of Temptation would not be shabby. No, not at all. So fair enough, there actually are a lot, there are a lot of cards that get the job done here. Gerard draws for the turn. Fulminator Mage, one of his two cards. Don't know the other one just yet. So we start, here's the Fulminator Mage. Other cards gonna remain hidden. Both players at eight, game three. Does Ben opts not to crack a special line. So first we start with Bob Trigger. Bob shows stirring Wildwood. And Ben draws for turn. So far, Bob being a pretty good team player, just flipping the lands and letting Ben draw the spells. Yep. Land and then really awesome piece of business is about how you want to do it in this spot. <laughs> yeah. 
And sorry, the land's also a story Wildwood, so the land's also a piece of business. It's, yeah, it's land, perfect. It was great. Cedrano swings in. Gerard drops down to four. And here's the stirring Wildwood from Ben. That was the draw we knew about. And he passes back. Gerard possibly facing down lethal here. Draws for the turn. What can he do to stabilize? What's Ben looking for every turn off of Dark Confidant? Give me a treetop village and then give me something sweet. Fulminator Mage swings in. Will Ben make the trade? Does not. Ben drops to six. How does Gerard survive to next turn? He has the Fulminator for the Stirring Wildwood. Does he have a kill spell for Siege Rhino? He's going to need one. I mean, Gerard's playing his heart out here. I think there's a lot of players that would be really low to attack with Fulminator Mage in that spot. But Gerard feels like he can block out of this turn, and he really needs to get in every point of damage that he can, because his path to victory at this point probably involves Dark Confidant on Ben's side of the table hitting something big. Inquisition of Kozilek takes care of Slaughter Pact. Dan, Ben with no cards, Gerard with one. Now the problem is that it's it now combat's just face up. I mean, Ben can go untap and attack, and Gerard sure has have something. Gerard has to have an answer to Siege Rhino. And uh, Gerard also is going to have to sacrifice his Fulminator Mage to stop the Wildwood, so he won't have any threats himself. Yep. But maybe, I mean, if you're Gerard, what you're you're buying yourself one more shot at drawing Thrag Tusk, or, or you're hoping that Ben finds a low impact. High mana spell off his Dark Hobbit on this turn, something and like then Lilian. Again next turn. If you find something like Lilian of the Veil, even Twice. Lingering Souls, yeah. you get a shot at something bad happening. Yeah, if Ben's next two flips up Dark Hobbit deal six, that is now Gerard can play to. As long as one of them's not Siege Rhino. Right. You know, Fulminator Mage is another card in Ben's deck right now that doesn't really matter that much, but is a lot of damage. So. Uh, that's what Gerard's trying to play for right now. If he can survive this turn, and hopefully Ben finds high cost, low impact cards off his Dark Confidant. And Gerard counting his lands here. I don't, I'm wondering what it is he's sitting on. A lot of his high impact cards are gone. Both his Cryptics have been used, his Jace has been used. One of his two Ashioks. And he's gonna sacrifice it was a Snapcast range, and this is huge. He sacrifices the Fulminator to take care of Stirring Wildwood, and Snapcaster is the damnation. I think Gerard was trying to figure out if there's some way to Snapcaster Cryptic there and maybe finagle it, but that's the safest play. And now, now we're back. Top Deck Wars. And Gerard with a lot of goodies. All right. Who, who Top Decks the threat first? Gerard hits the Thrag Tusk. That'll play. And that was one of the best ones he could do. Goes up to nine. Ben with Siege Rhino, he okay. has him. <laughs> blow for blow, he is matching him. Gerard now back down to six, Ben up to nine. Even so, the Thrag Tusk wins the fight here, but only barely. And did Gerard hit something else? He is hoping for a copy of Snapcaster Mage, Thrag Tusk, Tassiger. Any of his, any of his big stuff. For Ben, it's less clear. Gerard offers a trade, Thrag Tusk for Siege Rhino. Not a great trade for Ben, maybe one he has to take. Well, I, I think the problem is if you take the trade here and then Gerard has the 3-3 three, three left over, I almost yeah, feel like you just go ahead, you take this hit. Swing oh, and draw another Siege Rhino? I think, <laughs> I think Ben's got to, uh, if he draws a removal spell, something like Path to Exile, something, he gets an opportunity to chump block the Thrag Tusk next turn, and I think his best shot to win is to take this hit. If he loses the Rhino, it seems a lot of his out top decks no longer win. We're back in the same spot we talked about a couple turns ago, where it looks pretty even, but Gerard's deck's much more powerful. Right, yeah. Ben doesn't want to take the trade, but doesn't want to take the damage, but he has to. So Ben drops down to four, Gerard at six. Yeah, I love that play from Ben. I think he's got to throw caution to win a little bit and hope that the Siege Rhino's good. And what was Gerard's draw now is the question. In Damnation, he's going to go ahead and Damnation away his own card. <laughs> Gerard just pleading for Ben to miss a draw step here. And is it? It is Tarmogoyf. Uh, Battle play. That's the opposite of missing. How big is it? Is it a 6-7? That's going to be a huge question here. Is it a 5-6 or 6-7? We have Creature, Land, Instant. Sorcery, Planeswalker. Planeswalker. I don't think there's anything else. So it's just 5-6. 
challenge. You're batting. You really want to find a sixth creature type in here. Come on. Card type. <laughs> it would be. It's a world of difference. Just five. Yep. So five, six, Tarmogoyf. The four staples that we know in these long, drawn-out games of instant land sorcery creature plus planeswalker mixed in. And Gerard does not so <laughs> a temptation. He tap decks him back. Ben goes down to one. All right, that that does, will so does, will also play. Does Ben have an out? I don't even know anymore. What does he hit? Well, if it's a kill spell for the Sower, he gets his Goyf back, and then we're back in parody ish It's Godless Shrine. So there you go. <laughs> Gerard Fabiano wins the top deck war. He wins two games to one. He'll improve to 6-0 and oh for Ben Green, his first loss at 5-1. and one. Still a great tournament for him. I'm happy to call that right now, thus far, the sweetest game of the tournament. <laughs> that was a lot of fun back and forth. And you can see, you know, when you get into that kind of spot, either player can win, but it feels like Gerard has an edge. He just has more high-impact cards in that sort of spot than a deck like Obson does. Yeah, well, I mean, you, 